Okay, hi, welcome. My name is Kayla, and these are the Redhead Reels. Thanks for joining. So, today I have for you the wrong Missy. This was just uploaded onto Netflix like two weeks ago, and going into it, I probably had as close to zero expectations as you could possibly imagine. I, in my mind, just like equated it to all of those like random movies that Adam Sandler just like put out there, which I have to admit, I didn't actually watch like any of them, I don't think. Um, So it's not anything bad necessarily that I was like comparing it to because I've never actually seen any of those Adam Sandler movies, but that's just what I had in my head. Um, I went into it just kind of thinking this is going to be like, just like a dumb movie to throw on in the background. And this movie ended up being so freaking hilarious that afterwards I immediately thought to myself like I have to text my best friend I have to text my sister and tell them to watch this movie because it's so funny and then I watched it again like a couple days later because like why not it's still on Netflix so I would definitely recommend this it's like a raunchy comedy it's rated TVMA which I don't really know why. Um, I mean, because I personally am not in like the behind the scenes, like tech type conversations of movies and shit. So I don't know why it's rated TV MA when it's a Netflix movie. Like, I don't get why it's not just rated R, but that's not my job. So it's rated TV MA. I wanted to read the IMDb synopsis for y'all so you can kind of get an idea if you don't know what this is about. It says, Tim thinks he's invited the woman of his dreams on a work retreat to Hawaii, realizing too late he mistakenly texted someone from a nightmare blind date. You can assume from the title that they're both named Missy and that's the mistake he makes. So just like every other one episode that I've uploaded, there's going to be spoilers. So if you don't want to know what happens, um, come back later and we'll do this all over again. Thanks. So I'm going to dive right into it. We start off with David Spade, who plays Tim, walking into a bar. And he gets a text from this girl that he's supposed to be meeting for his blind date. And it says, like, oh, hey, I'm in the blue dress across the bar. Come save me from this, like, beefy guy who's, like, being weird. So he goes over to try and, like, save this girl who he thinks he's on a date with that this weirdo is like hitting on and this girl in the blue dress whips around she's like five months pregnant and he's like oh I didn't realize you were pregnant but okay let's do this anyway and this like beefy dude who looks like a cross between Jason Momoa and The Rock is like this is my wife like what the fuck are you talking about so then Lauren Lapkus that's how I'm telling myself it's pronounced because I don't actually know um who plays Missy pops up from behind Tim and is like huh surprise I'm actually your date so while I think that's like a hilarious way to start things off Tim's like not super into it he's like soup like he is pretty boring and 
it seems like he's pretty comfortable admitting that. Like, he kind of knows his place. But yeah, he's like a stick in the mud and he's like, um, that was weird. Why'd you do that? And I'm like, dude, have some fun. Anyway, they go to start their, um, their stupid date and he tells her that he doesn't drink and then she turns in that into a whole thing and like personally I get it I know people in real life who don't drink but then she says like everybody who doesn't drink has a drinking story and I agree but we don't find that out yet he basically is like oh no I just don't like to drink And then she makes a joke about, like, their obvious age difference. And, like, he just looks like a dad. I don't actually even know if in real life David Spade has kids. But he just looks like some random white dad. And Missy's, like, got, like, braided pigtails. And her sweater's, like, stripey and multicolor. And, like, visually, they're just so incompatible. I mean, that, like, obviously all adds to the humor of it, too. But it's just so interesting to see how they're, like, juxtaposed. I just paused to Google it because I had to know. And David Spade is 21 years older than Lauren in real life. And, like, I don't... I'm not saying that's like a huge deal, but I just don't get it. Like for the point of the actual movie, I don't know like how old they're supposed to be in there and whether or not the age difference is smaller, but I just feel like that's such an interesting choice to make on purpose for the sake of casting, but who am I? But yes, we find out that So they like met each other through Tim's grandma. Like grandma met Missy somewhere and was like, oh my God, my grandson's single. And that's just like how they got set up. And basically like throughout the whole thing, like Missy's super outgoing. She has a lot of personality. She is very interesting. (laughs) One of her little pigtails falls into her wine glass and she starts sipping off the bottom of it like a freaking gerbil water bottle and like I just can't like Lauren I don't want to say her last name because I don't know how to pronounce it absolutely kills this performance she is like insane I mean like Missy's insane And it's the funniest thing I've probably ever seen. So that happens for a little while. She continues to, from across the restaurant, threaten that beefy guy that they got into a fight with. And Tim's like, um, all right, well, I'm going to go to the bathroom. He gets up, goes to the bathroom and tries to crawl out the bathroom stall window And like two seconds later, Missy pops in and slides on her back under the stall door, which first of all is absolutely disgusting because I have on purpose gone into a boy's bathroom, like a boy's public restroom, because sometimes us girls don't have other options. And that stuff is nasty as hell and she just slipped on underneath there and like on the floor and Dane Cook does a whole bit about how that shit is dripping wet constantly there's juices there's liquids something's always sticky I mean the place that they're at seems like a decent Like, it's not some random dive bar, but still, even in, like, a five-star, you would not catch me dead on the floor of a a boy bathroom. 
So she slips under the stall door and catches him mid-window and he tries to play it off like he was going to go like play a prank on her like haha this was a joke and she's like oh yeah well we should probably like leave though because I told Aquaman that we were going to go like beat him up or something or no she says that she flashed him and Tim and I are both like did you whip out your chesticles in the middle of this restaurant and she goes no I flashed him Sheila and whips a goddamn machete like hunting knife out of her purse that she calls Sheila and I about fell off of my couch and Tim's like what the fuck do you have that for and she's like oh it was a blind date like what if you wanted to kill me or something and so he's like mid conversation trying to slip himself out of this window he could not possibly give a fuck less about this girl and so she's like all right well uh I'll see you out there and he proceeds to push himself out the window and when he lands he like cracks his ankle in like like 90 degrees to the side and another kind of like subplot that carries itself through the movie is she has like 175 certifications to do like random things so the first job that she she says she's certified for is she's an emt so she runs out into this alley and it's like oh my god tim i'm gonna save you and runs up to him and cracks his ankle back in place and my worst fear is that she's lying and she's just like doing whatever to twist his ankle but i guess it worked so i mean i don't know and then after that it flashes forward three months and we see tim in his office and he we find out he's up for a promotion i honestly like they do something for sales i think i don't think i could probably tell you what he does for a job but he's up for a promotion and nick schwartzen is his assistant and he plays nate so then they're both talking about this um company retreat they have coming up in hawaii and tim's ex-fiance who also works for this company i swear on my life they never tell you her name but i personally because of my own psychoses needed to know so i looked it up and her name is actually julia but they they never tell you that and it gave me so much anxiety just referring to her as elliot from scrubs but julia is tim's ex-fiance and she is now currently married to somebody else and her and her husband are going to be going on this retreat so nick schwartzen the assistant his name's nate nate's like dude you have to figure something out like you're gonna look so dumb if you show up to hawaii by yourself you dated that psycho three months ago like get out there and do something and tim's like all right whatever like i have to go to the airport i have to go on some trip so he heads out to the airport and he bumps into this girl and they like drop their stuff and she like picks up her shit and she's on her way like she's got places to go and people to see he heads off to his gate and when he goes to hand in his ticket the person tells him that he has the wrong ticket and he goes and he reads it and it's this girl's so he rushes over to give this hot girl her ticket back and she like also missed that flight because she had his ticket instead and um they find out it's because they have the same luggage so they have the same bag they have the same book in both their bags they neither of them drink they have like everything in common 
they make a lot of references to the affair which i haven't seen so i don't get them but that seems to be like a whole theme but yeah the whole thing is like they are basically the same person and something that i will probably never understand is how these movies will cast like a literal supermodel to be David Spade's love interest. Like, bless him, all of his successes, he is fantastic. But what? Like, in the movie, she's literally in the Miss America pageants. And he looks like he could be her father. Like, they're sitting at the bar, hanging out, mingling until they both have to get on their next flight. And he could be her father, except she's also, like, five inches taller than him. If he ever hears me saying this, I'll probably set myself on fire. Because he's, like, an icon. But still. Like, you never see average-looking females cast like, hitting up the likes of Jason Momoa. Like, you never see a freaking Hemsworth with a five in any movie. But I think that's also, like, just my own personal issues coming out into this podcast. So, who am I to say? But yeah, so they're hanging out. They're doing their deeds. They go to try and like hook up in a janitor's closet and that's something I like really take an issue with because in every movie slash tv show somebody's trying to fuck in a janitor's closet and it's like a whole ass room never have I ever in my life seen a janitor's closet with that much space Um, but I guess, I don't, like, it's an airport, so maybe they have extra stuff to keep stock of in there. So, yeah, they go into the janitor's closet, and they're, like, trying to get their nasty on, and she hears her flight being called, so she runs away, and Tim gives her his phone number so that they can, like, hook up after And then, like, two seconds later, she texts him, like, hey, it's Melissa. And this is another thing I take issue with because Lauren's character actively says that she goes by Missy. But this hot Melissa never calls herself Missy. So I don't know why he automatically, like, goes to try and start calling her that. But he does. He, like, saves her contact as Missy and hits her up like, hey, Missy, let's go to Hawaii in a little bit. Slow down. So they exchange phone numbers and he's, like, living his best life. So I guess, like, my assumption is that this is a hotel room because he was on the planes. I don't know where he was going or whatever. Um, I probably wasn't paying attention like that, but he's in this like 10 tone gray bed wearing pajamas with his hairs like all combed over. Like he just looks like such a dad and he already texted quote Missy to say like oh hey it's uh been a while so what's up and at this point he doesn't know that it was it's like missy missy not hot melissa but they're having this whole conversation and they end up texting for like a week before he realizes in person the mistake he made but so this is the first night and he's laying in bed probably watching like 60 minutes and she in his mind, this is like the hottest girl he has ever seen in his life. And you can tell that she's trying to like saucy text him. And she goes, what are you wearing? And his response is pajamas. 
and like I just what is going through his head I don't know I mean because I'm also not like a saucy texter so I can see where he's coming from like I say those things just to be an asshole but he literally thinks that he's texting the woman of his dreams who wants to like sext and he goes pajamas and then another thing I take issue with is then Missy asks him for a Richard picture and for those of you who don't know that just means dick pic but I don't like to say that so she asks for a Richard picture and no female that I have ever met in my entire life asks for that so that's like your first 15 red flags all in one dose but so then he does it and he's like he, the whole scene he's such a freaking dad he's like oh do people do this I don't know so he just like pulls his pant flap up and like leaves the flash on and everything it's the whole thing it it's honestly so funny though and I should I meant to mention this earlier I don't remember if I actually did but I do think it's important for y'all to know that I watched this movie for the first time with my mom so just kind of keep that on the back burner as we proceed but yeah so they're texting for like a full week his assistant Nate reads and can see everything on Tim's phone so this whole conversation all the pictures back and forth because evidently he sends more than one Richard is getting sent straight to Nate and it's so unfortunate um but Nate is like all about it like he wants to be a part of Tim's life so hard that he's like oh yeah of course like oh I'll like teach you all about grooming and all these things and so they're trying to stalk hot Melissa and they google her and they find out that she's Miss Maryland and they're like bragging all up and down around town and Jackie Sandler pops up and she is the person who is also going for Tim's promotion so it's Tim Burse Jackie Sandler who in this movie her name's Jess so she pops up and she's like a straight boss and she's like oh you're gonna bring like your hot model to Hawaii and he is gloating all around and cannot wait for everybody in this office to see like his hot new girlfriend especially his ex fiance Julia so then he finally texted her and said like hey do you want to come to Hawaii for this work thing and she's like hell yeah and I also just have to say that he texted this girl for a full week and had absolutely no issue with the conversations or anything that like transpired but when he finds out that it was Missy he's like flabbergasted and in my mind I don't get this because Missy and hot Melissa are two completely separate entities of human being like the way that they do or say anything is going to be the the polar opposite of each other and the fact that he first of all didn't get an inkling and second of all had no issue whatsoever when he thought that she was hottie like the hot melissa um but so he's sitting on the plane waiting for her to show up and missy bounces her way down the aisle and into her seat and his entire life flashes before his eyes and she mentions that she still has Sheila and well (laughs) 
she apologized that it took her so long to get onto the plane because she got like fully briefed by TSA because she brought Sheila with her, the freaking hunting machete. And she goes, oh, it's okay. I told them it was my service knife. And that has no impact on the actual storyline. But I cackled for like three minutes after she said that. Um, So I thought that that was important for you to hear. And so he starts to try and like explain that he fucked up and invited her by accident. And then she goes into the story about how he saved her life and that when he texted her saying that he wanted to like talk and get to know each other or whatever, that she was like about to jump off a bridge. And so he's like, well, what the fuck do I do now? So he just shuts up. He just doesn't mention it ever. And then she slips him a dog tranquilizer because I think she's like a certified like vet tech or something she's like a certified animal some shit and so that's where she got these dog tranquilizers and slips him one by accident and he's so stressed at this point that he even starts to try to order alcohol and she's like no he's an alcoholic he can't have alcohol and he's like I'm really not an alcoholic but I'm going to lose my fucking mind then this dog tranquilizer kicks in and he passes out and wakes up 40 minutes later to her giving him a a downstairs massage just under a blanket surrounded by human beings on this plane and he's like what the fuck are you doing and she <laughs> she's been doing it forever everybody around them knows and he like literally just woke up and has no idea what's happening and then this plane gets hit with turbulence so this guy's doing the work for her and you can assume how it went and so he you knows and they're surrounded by like ladies and one of them tells him that he's going to hell but like in reality he didn't mean to like it wasn't his fault he didn't tell her to um so then they get to the hotel and it is like think just go with it with adam sandler where they do that whole big family vacation to hawaii like it is a fancy ass hotel And he's basically bringing, like, white trash. Which, like, I don't want to call her that because I honestly love her so much. And she's everything that I wish that I was. So they're in this lobby and she gets into this screaming match with children. And it's the funniest moment of probably my entire life. Because I don't remember exactly what she said, but these kids are like, oh, that's inappropriate. And she is scream fighting with these children. And then after they walk away, she says to Tim, oh my God, I love kids. That was so fun. And I honestly just love Missy so much. And then when they're trying to check in they run into his ex julia and her new husband who acts and talks like a 10 year old frat boy he is so terrible and like the fact that julia essentially went from tim who is like your grandpa to this random kid who probably just like shotgunned three beers blows my mind I don't know what she has going on in her life but my guess is it's troubling so they finish checking in they go up to the room which is also super fancy as hell 
and it's all set up to be like super romantic and nice because they thought that he was going to be there with hot melissa and nate is the one who made all these reservations and so she goes into the bathroom and there's rose petals and like a bubble bath already drawn up and tim can hear her from the bedroom like splashing around and she goes oh i fell on the toilet so he goes in there and she's in five seconds got herself ass naked and jumped in this tub with the rose petals and bubbles everywhere and she submerges herself and comes back with her eyes covered with rose petals and gives herself like a hair mustache and calls herself hell star with the most insane goblin voice and like i want to be this girl more than anything in my life she is so fantastic and tim obviously being the geezer he is is like um this sucks i'm not interested um i have to go to a work thing see you never so he goes down and has to like figure out this damage control because he told everybody that he was bringing like a model basically and what he has is like a cabbage patch doll so he tries to make it sound like she's sick and just nobody's ever gonna meet her and then five seconds later she pops down in like a nightclub sequin dress and this girl is ready to freaking party she is so socially inappropriate like all she does is talk about sex stuff and tim's like head honcho boss is right there the one who's supposed to be giving him this promotion so it gets um awkward but yeah so she's like ready to go like she is having a good ass time she pulls a whole bunch of Tim's co-workers aside and starts giving people psychic readings and there's actually a cameo with Chris Farley's son which I just love so much so I figured I had to tell you that and he comes in uh, a couple times throughout the movie so she's giving people psychic readings and she tells Chris Farley's son that he's going to die in a plane crash which has like almost no bearing on the actual plot line but you're welcome so then they start like this whole montage of her just getting like fucked up and raging she is throwing drinks back she is dancing up on top of everybody she is feeling every single lizzo song in the world and (laughs) so hot melissa is a two-sport collegiate athlete so tim told missy she had to be a two-sport collegiate athlete so she told everybody that she is a diver and decides to dive off this cliff into the ocean to prove that she did like college sports and tim's like you literally told me that last week you're gonna jump off a bridge like I'm not letting you jump off this cliff but she is lost in the freaking sauce and takes this whole running start to jump off a cliff and hits every single ledge on the way down like she tripped before she actually jumped so she got no air she basically slid off the side hits every ledge hits a branch you hear like 15 different things crack and then she finally face plants on the beach and it just gets up and I'm like I cannot stand up from the couch and be physically okay like something is sore at all times and she 
could have just broken every single bone in her body and she is ready for round two. Like, she is my hero. So, Tim, I guess, goes and gets her. They cut to him rolling her into the hotel room on one of those bellboy luggage carts and he just like throws her in bed and he goes to go to sleep and he's woken up in the middle of what he thinks is a sex dream with his ex julia but when he comes to real life he's having like real life relations with missy and i feel it's important to remind you all at this point i'm watching this with my mom and missy is loud in every aspect of her life so you can only imagine and she is covered head to toe in sand so as things are progressing you can just see it all shaking out of her hair like a freaking salt shaker so then the next day he wakes up and she's like passed the hell out and she's got her little CPAP machine on and she is still covered in sand and he sneaks out because he obviously wants nothing to do with her for the day and his team building activity for the day is they're going out on the ocean in a boat so they're on the boat about to leave and rob schneider is there his job is like as a uh, a local so he works on the boat he works for like this shark hunting company or whatever i don't honestly know what they're doing except tim's boss jack just wants to see a shark so that's what rob schneider does so they're on the boat getting ready to leave and you hear missy sprinting at the boat screaming for them not to leave her and tim starts like undoing all these ropes he's like we need to get the fuck out of here right now because i cannot deal with this girl and she's like already on the dock and they haven't pulled away yet so if you think this girl did not just jump off a cliff for you she is not going to be stopped by this boat driving away so he's trying to get this boat like all the way away from her and she just jumps in the water and swims after it and i'm like you highly underestimate her dedication which is just so admirable to me but so there's a shark cage and jack the boss is like we need to get in there and we're not going home until we find a shark like i don't care what it takes i don't care how long it is i don't care who's in there with me we have to find a shark so they offer up tim and make him get in the cage with jack to go shark hunting he like tries so hard to get out of it but missy misses every single cue or like she thinks that she's helping him out i don't exactly know what the goal is here but he fails at trying to get himself out of it so he gets into the shark cage and missy takes it upon herself to craft up some chum to attract these sharks even though there's a specific rule that says no chumming she doesn't really give a shit so she's chopping this stuff up and she goes to try and dump it directly over the shark cage and rob schneider is like um this is a rule you can't do it and so then they get into like a fist fight over this bucket of chum and he spills it all over her and then she throws up onto the shark cage which was enough so this huge 
great white beelines from like miles away at this cage because of her throw up and starts like beating them up. So the shark is like attacking them. Jack breaks his nose on something. I think Tim hits him. It like it is gushing blood everywhere. The whole thing looks like a horror movie. And then on the surface of the actual boat, they're like dancing, they are partying, they are living their best life while Tim and Jack are like about to get eaten by Jaws too. So she pulls them up and we find out she's also certified in CPR. So she saves Tim's life. So they're walking back from the boat to the hotel and he's like super pissed off with missy she's like well i was trying to be nice and i was trying to help you out and like give you some one-on-one time with your boss that you're trying to get a promotion with and you're trying to like impress him so like sorry for trying and sorry for trying to help you but he's just like super pissy about the whole thing simultaneously he gets a text from hot missy hot melissa because she never says she goes by missy so that's my biggest issue with the plot but hot melissa texts him and it's like haha remember me and he's like literally you would never understand the mistake that i made it's horrendous my life sucks and at the same time missy walks off and like falls into a swamp but he's just so pissed off at this point he could not care less and he just like walks away and goes back to the hotel without her so then he goes back to the hotel and at some point like she comes back like I guess she showered or something she's on the balcony in a robe and she's hollering over at her BFF Barbara who is their neighbor Missy and Tim get into like this little spat so he basically is like I really don't need to spend like that much time with you and she's like okay well me and babs are gonna go hit up the spa and he's like yeah go like do literally whatever you want i don't care so he goes and does some work stuff and her and babs are gonna go hit up the spa and we cut to tim talking with his assistant nate and they don't explain why but it's like tim and 10 of his co-workers all standing there in like black bodysuits bodysuit is the wrong word like morph suits it's a morph suit black head to toe and there's like 10 of them all dressed like this and they don't explain why you're just like what the fuck are you doing but then we find out Babs is Jack's wife. So the woman that Missy went to go hang out in the spa with all day is the wife of Tim's boss, who he is trying so hard to impress and get this promotion from. So Tim realizes what a mistake he made. He sprints across this whole AS island to get to the spa before missy can fuck shit up he's like frantic trying to ask this spa lady where missy is and she tells him that the older woman she was with aka babs was very like emotionally distraught and like upset when they left so things in his mind could not be any worse so he goes back to the room and finds missy like laying on the bed and he's like what the hell do you think you're doing making jack's wife cry and she's like no i'm actually a certified marriage counselor and her husband sucks so i just like told her to leave him and he's like first of all you just ruined my boss's life second of all do you actually think that you're in a position to be giving people counseling when you told me last week you're gonna jump off a bridge 
And she goes, well, when you go bungee jumping, you jump off a bridge. And so this whole time she was framing it as if she was suicidal, but she was like literally just going bungee jumping. And he's like, you said that I saved your life. And she goes, well, you could have. Bungee jumping is dangerous. So Tim's like, you have to go fix this. He tracks down Jack and he's in this pool or like in the hotel pool and um and she floats on up to try and talk to him about it and they get into this like whole thing and she (laughs) so they get into this whole thing she's telling him how he's not like present enough and he needs to do better in his marriage and she goes underwater and comes back with leaves on her eyes and brings back Hellstar. And first of all, I love Hellstar. So yes, please. Second of all, she just, they're in the middle of like a pool. It's not an ocean. It's not any type of like nature type. Like it is an in-ground cement pool where the hell is she getting these leaves? That's what I don't get. But however she does it, I'm all for it. So Jack is like, fuck you. You ruined my marriage. Bye. He gets out of the pool. He tries to run away and trips over a chair and like cracks his neck. So she also states that she is a chiropractic practitioner which sounds fake so she uh snaps his neck back in position she goes back she's like hanging out with uh jack and babs and trying to get to the root of all their problems and um she texts tim that she fixed the whole issue and he is good to go so cut to now they're doing a company talent show and so the reason that they were all in these head-to-toe black morph suits is because Tim's team their talent is shadow dancing so Missy says like oh don't worry like he loves you Jack is your biggest fan we're like good to go so he gets out there and Jack is freaking hooting and hollering all throughout this entire performance for no reason essentially because they're not that good like Nate the assistant is emceeing their whole performance and the entire time he sounds like drunk and like he's gonna throw up so I I don't know but he Jack cannot get enough of this he is obsessed with Tim and he keeps screaming I love that guy so he gets done their little performance is over and he gets off the stage and he's like missy what did you do because two seconds ago jack hated me so why is he in the audience screaming that he loves me so missy says that she hypnotized him so she hypnotized jack to associate Tim with his Nana so anytime he hears Tim's name he thinks it's his grandma and is like so in love with him like he's obsessed with his freaking grandma and she also says that she hypnotized Jack to only think of like terrible things when he hears Jess's name and Jess is the other woman who's up for this promotion so anytime that he hears Jess's name he starts like dry heaving like crazy like he cannot stand her um so then Jess's team all starts and they're doing like a new kids on the block dance I'm pretty sure there's no way for me to know because I've never actually listened to or watched anything on new kids on the block but I'm pretty confident that's what it is. So that's just what I'm going to go with for now. 
And throughout the actual performance, she has her team members say her name, which is like kind of tacky, but it makes it even better because every single time that they say her name, Jack is in the audience dry heaving. So this is kind of the turning point where you can tell that Tim stops hating Missy. So he actually like starts liking her. And after this whole performance, like talent show type deal, they decide to go on a dinner date. So they're on a date and a couple tables over is where Julia is, um, the ex-fiance with her stupid husband. And that like Tim and Missy are having a good old time. They're cracking up. They are getting along. They're having a successful conversation. They are start like starting to talk about real things. So he mentions all of these random things that she's certified for. And she mentions that when her dad passed away when she was younger, she was really lonely. So somebody suggested that she take classes because that's a good way to meet people. So she just signed up for all of these classes so that she can make friends and then just got certified in a whole bunch of shit. And she also gets him to talk about his drinking story because like she said before, everybody who doesn't drink has that story about why they stopped. So he tells her that when he was in college, he got like super drunk at one of the parties for his frat because he was in a frat apparently. And when he gets drunk, he walks on his hands and she's like, that's not that big of a deal. And he's like, well, it is when you walk off the roof of the frat house. So he literally got super drunk and just hand walked off of the roof and probably broke a bunch of stuff so that's a story which I don't necessarily think was worth all of the build-up but there it is so now that they're like actually having a good time hanging out they decide to like go back and have some adult intimacy so missy's back in the hotel room she is getting herself ready tim goes to nate's room to get weed and nate's like well i couldn't bring like weed weed because tsa would have like been all up inside his ass for it so he has just weed products so he has like weed deodorant and toothpaste and hair growth stuff so simultaneously while Tim's trying to get the weed Missy's in the room and ex-fiance Julia shows up and she like knocks on the door to try and like talk to Tim I guess which I don't know how that was supposed to work because she knows that Missy's there, but whatever. So Missy invites her in and they start talking and hanging out and Tim comes back and it's like, I don't know if it's his worst nightmare or like a fantasy that Missy and Julia are just like laying in bed, joking around, like drinking wine together, both kind of like half dressed. And so... Missy also says that she's almost a sex therapist and she recommends that Tim and Julia like banging out one more time just to make sure that they don't like still have like chemistry or feelings for each other or something and he's like first of all what second of all even if I decided to say yes like what are you gonna do like are you just gonna like stand 
standing outside the door like a puppy while I have sex with my ex in our room. And she's like, no, I'll be here too. So the three of them are trying to get down and dirty. But at this point, he like actually likes Missy. So he's like, uh, sure, why not? So they all go into the bathroom and use this weed toothpaste together so that they can like get high. And they go back to the bed and in the background starts playing like a bluegrass coffee shop version of my neck, my back. And I did not know how much I needed to hear that in my life. That song alone made it worth it to me that I was still currently watching this movie with my mom during this awkward threesome. Because while they're trying to get down and dirty, Julia like ends up off the bed and they both end up like accidentally punching her a bunch of times. So she just like ends up knocked out on the floor. And after a while, she just stops trying um, and literally just gets up and walks out. So then uh, the next day is like their last day of this company BS. And they go down to the beach and they're having this little party. And when she hypnotized Jack for like to make him love Tim and hate Jess, She also told him to, like, throw out his normal constraints of adult life. So, it's like a child, like, acid-induced party where Jack is literally a merman in the ocean conducting his interviews for this big promotion. So, Tim has to throw on a merperson little tail and swim out into the ocean to try and fight for this promotion. Jess was before him and it like didn't go well um but she doesn't tell Tim that but because of that she's like super pissy so she comes back out onto the beach and she is not in good spirits because her interview just went terribly and so Missy is just like, sitting there having a good time getting her face painted, and Jess tells her that she wasn't supposed to be there. Jess knew who hot Melissa was because she saw a picture of her in the office before they all left. So, as soon as she saw Missy in real life, she knew that that was the wrong girl, and she just tells her this because she's in a bad mood and like it just sucks because I love Missy with a passion. Tim doesn't know that this happened obviously. He they go back to the room. They're like living their life and he is like being nice. Like he's still trying to hang out with her. He also tries to like mimic Hellstar and he's like actually like letting go and trying to have a fun time and he goes into the bathroom and she picks up his phone she reads his messages with hot melissa and how it starts out with like oh my god this is a nightmare because i texted the wrong girl and she's a psycho um but for the ps couple nights like after the talent show and when they were like at their dinner date before that awkward threesome attempt Hot Melissa was texting him still and he like actively ignored her to focus on Missy. So like, I mean, it's the classic rom-com misunderstanding where, yeah, it started off that he thought she was crazy, but now he obviously likes her, but she found out that he was talking shit. So that's the point we're at in this movie so he comes back out of the bathroom and missy's gone and she has packed up her shit and she is down in the lobby ready to leave 
and he looks at his phone and the messages are still pulled up so he obviously knows what's happening and he runs down to try and stop her from leaving and she's like already at the cab but when he gets down there hot melissa rolls up in and is like oh my god i made it i'm so glad that your bff jess called me the other day and told me to come here and he's like fuck you and fuck Jess because I didn't ask you to come this time. I tried to ask you to come the first time, but that obviously didn't work out. So now he's like trying to act happy that hot Melissa's there now. And it's not going that well. And so they go on this like awkward date. He literally drinks six shots of whiskey And then he and walks off of like a two-story building and cracks his ankle and he asks hot Melissa to bend it back into place. And she goes, I don't know how. And he goes, of course you don't because he's pissy. He don't have Missy. So he ends up getting the promotion. He goes home. He's trying to text Missy to get like back all up on her um she's not having it because she has a lot of self-worth and when he's at work the one day he goes into jack's office and breaks the hypnotism so he no longer thinks that tim is his grandma and so jack's like well you're not my grandma like fuck you go so then tim ends up losing his job so then he ends up like reverse blind date stalking her where he like tim makes a dating profile and hits missy up but logistically like it doesn't that doesn't really add up because like did he use somebody else's pictures i don't really know but so they set up this blind date not realizing she sets it up not realizing that it's tim so then he is like sitting off to the side and he tries to play the same joke on her that she did the first time where he texts her saying that he's a different person to make her go up and like make a fool of herself so he texts her hey i'm in the black sweatshirt and the black hat and she's like all right whatever she goes over to try to say hi to this guy she thinks she's on a date with and it's a freaking vanilla ice so it hardcore blows up in his face and he's like oh no it's me and she's like i literally thought i was going to be on a date with vanilla ice and it's you who like broke my heart he like makes his whole speech and professes his love for her and how he wishes he was more like her and he's jealous and he like wants to be carefree and he's never been like that and so that's why he was like nervous and like all that bullcrap from every single movie um but then they end up together so that's that and there is an extra scene like a couple minutes after the credits start rolling because when you watch it on netflix as soon as it's over the little pop-up for like to start watching a different trailer doesn't come automatically so that's how i know personally that there's going to be like an extra scene so i like just fast forward until it happens but yeah so there's like a cute little scene there's like a couple different subplots that i didn't get into because this is long enough for a movie that's literally an hour and a half long um but there's like a a couple cute little subplot storylines and it like ties back in this little extra scene during the credits overall i really liked it i have seen it a few times now because it's honestly just so funny like it i've seen it three times 
and each time it is absolutely hilarious. I don't recommend watching it with a parent if that's ever an option for you. I would say no, um, but like obviously you can live your own lives and make the choices that you want to make, but that's just my two cents on that. I mean, other than that, it's definitely worth a watch, I would say. I, on average, watch any movie or series a minimum of two times. So, for me to say that I've rewatched something doesn't necessarily hold much, like, substance because I rewatch almost everything, but that's just me. And uh, I definitely think that it's worth watching at least once. So, that's all I've got for you for today. Um, like I've said before, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at the Redhead Reels. If you would like to suggest anything or if you like have any comments or whatever you want to share, I don't really know. If you're interested, you can subscribe, like, share with other people or do whatever you want because it's your life. So, um, that's it for me for today. I will see y'all next time, probably. Okay, bye!